Hey guys, this is Joe Metalone, and we're gonna kind of move into the next step of Grunt JS. Uh, if you remember, we left off. We uh, uh, set up. Uh, let's see. We had uh, the Less plugin, which compiles Less to CSS. We had the Coffee plugin, which compiles Coffee to JavaScript. And we had the Watch plugin, which is basically watching for any changes to those files and uh, running those compiled tasks. So let's take a look. We got our Grunt file. We got our Coffee task, our Less task. Our watch configuration and then down here we've got this default task to automatically run the coffee in the last uh, 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 tasks uh, what we're gonna do real quick just to get you up to speed is run our grunt watch and once that's up and running uh, we can go into our last file and we'll change this back to black save it it recognizes that the file was changed processes it if we run over here and refresh we can see that our new file is there so what that did is it converted the site.less to site CSS uh, in our root directory which is where we've got it set up right now and uh, automatically did that for us so uh, one thing there that you can see is you know we have to keep refreshing that page what we can do is we can install a server and then along with the watch we can have it automatically live reload the page for us so we're going to take a look at that uh, we're going to install something called express if you've used node you've probably used express or the connect engine um, this is specific to grunt it's called grunt express and of course we're going to save that to our dev dependencies and that's going to take just a second uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started on building this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new task or a new configuration here called express. And uh, that takes an object called all. And that takes an object called options. And into that we're going to pass in the few things we want to do. Uh, we need, This is going to run like local host and then a port. So we're just going to pick port 9000. Um, I'm not sure if we need the host name or not, but I'll go ahead and throw that in there. Local host. Then um, we need to tell it the base, which is, uh, see, technically we could have this in, um, we could be saying that, you know, run it, run the server from, you know, the project folder or something like that. In this case, we're just saying everything's in the root directory that we want to run. So go there, get that index.html, and whatever it says to do, do it. Uh, then the only other thing we need to add in here is live reload is true. And what that's going to do is it's actually, if I could spell, it's actually going to inject something into the HTML. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. Now up here in my watch uh, task or my watch configuration, I'm going to add one more object called options. And into that, I'm just going to pass live. Can I click on that? No. Reload is true. So now, uh, I think we're good to go. So what's going to happen here? Well, let's just go ahead and do it. Oh, you know what? I am forgetting to create the actual task. So let's load the npm task, which was grunt express. And we're going to create a new task. We're going to call that server. And it's going to run from up above the express configuration. And then our watch task. So let's save that. And then down here, we named our task server. We're going to run server, so grunt server. And then uh, once that's loaded up, what we're going to need to do is go ahead and load up localhost, uh, uh, what do we say, 9000. So localhost 9000. Oh, uh-oh. 9000, localhost, base, port 9000. Everything looks good. Uh, let me just try something. This might always need to be an array. Uh, I know there's base and bases, so let's try that one more time. If that doesn't work, I'll pause the video and figure it out. All right, grunt server. Okay, you know what? I think we're good now because there was a, uh, uh, a lot more information on that last one. Let's refresh here. And it's taking just a minute the first time it's firing up. Hopefully this is going to work. Okay, so this works. Now, one important thing to note, there is a difference here in our HTML. Uh, over here in our HTML, we end it with this script, and then the body and the uh, HTML close. What Express has done is it's injected this additional bit of JavaScript, uh, which is basically using this port 35729 to call live reload.js. And what that does is really cool. Uh, so I'm going to change the inner content of that button. 
I'm gonna say uh, I'm just gonna say button in there. And as soon as I save, you'll see in my console here, it reloaded that in index.html. And so there's our button. All of our JavaScript is still working, but it, it updated it in real time. This is the paragraph. Boom, there it is. Now, um, when we run our, our, when we change our less, we're also going to get that, but it's going to take a second longer because, or a, a little bit longer because it's, you know, compiling the less to the CSS and then Express is picking up on that and reloading it. So let's just go back to red on that, save. And we'll see that, you know, the watch is seeing that the file has been changed. It's going to recompile that and boom, you know, our page reloaded and we've got our button back in red. Uh, so this, I mean, this is a really simple example, but you can see how if you had tons of less files, tons of CoffeeScript files, SAS or TypeScript or whatever you might be working in, and they're all, you know, inheriting from each other, uh, being included or imported by each other, you know, it can do all that and reload that page for you without you having to worry about it. You can just throw that into a second window, and uh, every time you make a change, it'll automatically update the page for you as you're developing. So there you go, that's uh, the Express Server and the live reload feature of Grunt.js.